one of the main things that I want to talk about um, and your vulnerableness in your book, um, I Am Number Eight, the 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 impact of, of where you was going. First off, you you just mentioned you you written two books mm-hmm. or, or published two books. And the thing about that, where did you come up with or how were you motivated to act on it? Yeah, I think um, I, I was associate pastor at Lakewood Church mm-hmm. in Houston with a guy named Joel Osteen, yes, who's sir. like the nicest human in the world. Like mm-hmm. If he was in a horror movie, he would still be that guy. Like, right, right, well, right. Freddy Krueger, why are you stabbing those people? Don't stab those. You're supposed to love those people. Like, he's that dude. Right, like, right. oh, Jason, just put the knife down and pick your Bible up and Come say, on. this is my Bible. This is my word. <laughs> um, you know, so I was serving there, and he said, John, I think you have a message mm. that people need to hear. I want to introduce you to some publishers. And he opened that door. And uh, my first book was called I Am Number Eight, which is um, a parallel story between my life and the life of David in Mm. the Bible. Because people may not know, but David was the eighth son of Jesse. Mm. And so eight being the number of new beginnings. But if you study David's life, his brothers didn't like him. His father couldn't see him. Mm. And his mother didn't embrace him. Mm. So he was an outsider. He felt like an outsider in his own home, in his own body in his own mind. Mm. Um, And the one thing he had was his art, his creativity. And he also had a a fighting spirit. So when he wasn't writing songs, he was slinging rocks up against, you know, the trees, learning how to, you know. Protect the sheep. Yeah, protect the sheep. Not knowing that one day what he learned in that field was going to help him with a giant. Mm. And so for me, that book, I Am Number Eight, the 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 tagline is overlooked, undervalued, but not forgotten by God. Wow. So <clears throat> it harkens back to my childhood. My mom and dad divorced when I was about four years old. And when he left, you know, it literally it's like all hell broke loose. My mother said I started having nightmares. Um, when I was four and a half years old, I was sexually abused mm. by two guys in the neighborhood in the middle of the day mm. on my front lawn. Nobody stopped cars driving by. Nobody said anything. And I held that probably until I was like 19 years mm. old. So when when you have something like that happen to you at a young age, right. you, um, you don't even have language to describe right. what you're dealing with. So mentally, I'm processing something I don't even know what it is. Mm-hmm. And it ain't just a physical thing, it's spiritual as well. Right. So all of those things were happening. And as I grew then on top of that experience, I'm in church all the time. Right, right, right. So now I've got, you know, my mama raising me to know God. Then I got this pain over here of an absent father. And you're telling me God is my father, mm-hmm. but I can't see him either. Right. So it's hard for me to embrace an invisible God when I already have one invisible dad. Mm. Yo. Man, it's just, it's just, just Barry I just, Bonds just knocked my brain. Whoa. Yeah. So what happened is... I, I I literally began to, you know, kind of embrace the religion of my mom, the relationship to God that my mom had. Mm-hmm. And my mom's a great woman of God. She's a great mother. She's not a great father. Mm. She was never called to be a father. Right. So, you know, I'm trying to figure out what it is to be a man and a young man and how that, you know, what's my morality? Right. What's my spirituality? All of those things are still happening. And I still got this this demon from four years old Mm -hmm. sitting in here. Still looming. Yeah. And it wasn't no mental health conversations then. It probably is still not no mental health conversations now. I think I'm um, I'm in a position where I see the good, I see the bad, and I see the processing Mm -hmm. with men who Mm -hmm. in this world, being a black man, you're able or you're faced with trauma where you just have to, well, you have to just figure it out, right? Yeah. And we need more dads. We need more men that can help assist the transition. Now, granted, I want to, you know, I don't want to just be, um, you know, one dimensional with the, 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 the ethnicity because all men, they can come in many shapes, forms, and sizes. 
need to, you know, reach back and impact and empower the younger generation. That's right. Now, in my community, that's right. right. I only can speak off what I see. We got, you know, we're in Atlanta, Georgia, where the killings, the shootings, the the violence is at an all time high. Especially, you know, the time of year it is. You have to be able to say to that younger generation to say, "Bruh, what's up? You you, you good? Hey, man, bro." And and not and not. Oversaturated with church, 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 church. Even reading the Bible, and I'm gonna get back to David. That's my favorite character in the Bible, right? Yeah. But even for Jesus, okay. Jesus got condemned because even the church people, the followers of Christ, mm -hmm. was always asking, like, "Why are you over here hanging out with them? They ain't." Yeah, yeah. People have a problem with um, how Jesus rocked. Um, the more you study the life of Jesus just as a man, mm -hmm. he's the kind of man I want to be right. because he had compassion, but he also had a firm set of values and principles that he would not move from. So every person that he encountered had value. Mm. He started from value. The problem with some in a lot of churches is church starts from we're right, you're wrong, mm. come up to where I am. Mm. That's not how Jesus interacted with anyone. He was, I'm Jesus, you're you, let me show you that there's a better way. Right. There's a difference between saying you're wrong and let me introduce a new idea. Mm -hmm. Jesus was big on conversation. He was not judgmental. Mm -hmm. The woman at the well had been married five times and was living with a dude. Jesus walks up and say, like, oh, let me get some water. She's like, you know good and well, we ain't even supposed to be talking. <laughs> Jews and Samaritans don't talk. He's right. like, yo, but if you knew who I was, you'd ask me for some water and you'd never thirst again. Mm. She's like, ooh, tell me about your water. Oh, my right. goodness. And he was like, first go get your man. I don't want, it, I don't want you to feel like I'm hollering at you. infiltrate. Right. Nothing. And she was like, well, I'm not married. And then, he, then he hit her with the prophetic. He was like, yeah, you're not. You was married five times. Now you're just living with a guy. You know what? there's something hurting you on the inside that five marriages couldn't heal mm. and the sixth man can't heal, but I'm the seventh. I'll complete you. Wow. I'm the one that can, that can heal the hole in your heart right. because what you're trying to find in relationship, you can't find. It's a you versus you thing. Yep. You don't see you yet. Mm. I'm here to show you you. Right. And so I feel like um, where, where the religious world has gotten it wrong, particularly the, the construct that I come from, Christianity, some areas of evangelical Christianity have become so judgmental, mm -hmm. and, it, and it becomes like a VIP experience. They, they want to judge people that go to the club, but the church is a club. Mm. Y'all got a VIP lounge Correct. for the ones who give more, Correct. for the ones who have more clout, Correct. for the ones who can make you more popular. You let them sit closer because mm -hmm. you want them in your camera shots. That's how you vibe, and it's not like God don't see it because the truth is and there's a business aspect to church that nobody wants to talk about. Right. And that's what made me bitter. Mm. Like I was ready to give up everything related to the business of church. I love God. I don't have a problem with God. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not one of those people that wants to bash the church. I have a problem with the business of church because mm -hmm. I think the business of church has done a disservice to the souls of people. Right. And when you're more concerned about how much money you're bringing in on a Sunday than how many people are being fed right. and how many poor people are being uh, restored and how many people who didn't have a house now have some place to stay, we got a problem. Because right. now the stuff you are worried about is not stuff that Jesus was caring about. Right. Jesus was about them streets. <laughs> that's why he was for the streets. <laughs> and, he, and that's why the streets rocked with him. Mm. The people that didn't like Jesus were churchgoers, mm. Pharisees. Sadducees, the people who had the political and spiritual power of the day, right. they couldn't stand him because he didn't play by their rules. Right. That's why they don't like me. I don't play by your rules and you can't shut me up. Yes, sir. I don't, I'm not for sale. I received that. What's up, family? It's John Gray. You got to be locked in on Funky Fridays this Friday. I'm with my boy Cam Boogie. It's the Boogie Man. It's the Boogie Meister. You need to come here. We're going to talk all things manhood, relationship, religion, love, and a lot more. You want to be there. You want to know more about me? Holla at me at releaseyourroarlive.com. Oh. Boy, he did this before. Yeah. But that's tough. One take drink out of here, man.